looking for the cutting edge in smartphone technology and design? Well, LG's got you covered with their latest revision in their G series lineup. This is Gadget Gaming Fix, I'm Zed, and welcome to our review of the LG G3. The G3 is LG's answer to the swath of flagship phones released by manufacturers that aims to pack the very best tech in a reasonable form factor. It is the successor to last year's G2 and embodies many of its significant features such as the rear-mounted volume and power buttons and overall design aesthetics. Inside, it's sort of the same but different. It packs a quad-core Qualcomm 801 chip running at 2.5GHz that is slightly faster than the G2's Snapdragon 800 chip which was clocked at 2.2GHz. It comes with 16 or 32 gigabytes of onboard storage and 2 or 3 gigabytes of LPDDDR3 RAM respectively. Graphics is powered by an Adreno 330 GPU. Among the top flagship phones for 2014, there is little variation in the processors used as all of them use the Qualcomm 801 chip. The differences between them lie elsewhere. The display is the main differentiating factor for the G3, featuring a massive 5.5 inch Quad HD IPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440. This is the highest screen resolution of the current crop of flagships and puts into question whether the G3 is a phablet or phone. The screen boasts extra sharpness over its competition with 534 pixels per inch and 24-bit or 16 million colors keeps images vibrant, though not as eye-popping as the Super AMOLED screens of Samsung's Galaxy line. Watching videos and movies on this screen is what the large display and high resolution were meant for and the experience is truly immersive. Viewing angles on the IPS display are good as well, as you can see. Worried of damaging that huge display? Fret not as the screen is made of Corning's Gorilla Glass 3. Besides the G3, only two other prominent competitors have screens of this resolution. The recently announced Samsung Galaxy S5 LTE A edition and the Oppo Find 7. With such a large display, everyone's been asking the same question. How is the battery life? LG claims that although their battery is the same 3000mAh as the G2, its cathodes are made of graphite instead of metal, which LG claims to improve battery performance, thus delivering the same battery life as the G2 without increasing the battery's capacity. While I have never used the G2, so I can't vouch for LG's claims, what I can say is that the battery life is impressive. It will last a day with moderate use on LTE networks, and more than a day if you're relying on Wi-Fi for data. Another improvement over the G2 is that the battery is now user replaceable. An excellent move by LG to reassure buyers that regardless of the battery life, you can always swap in a new one. LG's G3 also has wireless charging out of the box. The same can't be said for Samsung's Galaxy S5 which requires users to buy a wireless charging enabled back cover. Moving on to connectivity. The G3 has plenty of options including Cat4 LTE with download speeds of up to 150 megabits per second. 802.11 ABGNAC Dual Band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0 LE, NFC, Micro USB 2.0 supporting USB on the go or OTG. And yes, it has a micro SD XC card slot, allowing you to use cards up to 128GB. In our Wi-Fi test, the G3 showed high Wi-Fi speeds of more than 250 megabits per second when running the speed test app right next to the TP-Link AC 1750 Mbps capable router. The camera of the G3 is touted as its killer feature as the how to shoot like a pro at say it all. While the G3 may only have 13 megapixels which is average for today's smartphones, it has features such as a built-in optical image stabilization and center area laser autofocus which help it distinguish itself from the pack. The center area laser autofocus works fast for single shots the 1 3rd inch Sony Exmor RS sensor is similar to the G2 sensor, but the G3 ups its game with an aperture of f2.0 and adds dual tone flash capability which is supposed to render more natural colours in photos that use the flash. In real world usage, the camera is good in daylight, however it struggles under low light conditions as you can see in these images. Photos look good on screen but zoom in and you'll see they are heavily smudged. While I like the clean and easy to use interface of the camera app, I do find myself wanting more control over the camera at times such as control over the ISO and white balance on the fly. 
G3 also shoots video at 4K 30 frames per second. This is good for LG and other 4K TV brands as there isn't much 4K content out there to be viewed on their 4K TVs, so creating the content is the first step towards adoption. Besides 4K, the G3 also shoots at 1080p and 720p video at 30 frames per second and includes a slow-mo mode that shoots 720p video at 120 frames per second. Now on to features and design. LG has included its own interface over Android 4.4.2 KitKat, which features a flat look and clean design. Having used a Nexus 7, I did not feel the G3 deviates from the feeling of stock Android. Operation was snappy and responsive, and it did not feel like the machine was dragging its feet to deliver. The rear-mounted volume up and down buttons as well as the power button are unusual, but given the phone's near phablet dimensions, it's surprisingly comfortable to press and after a short learning curve, I was quickly used to the idea of the buttons being behind. Aesthetics is another strong suit of the G3. The G3 is a statement, from its full glass front to its full metal back. The G3 is quite simply beautiful. Some might say it borrows some cues from the HTC One M8, but it takes the best of that phone, which is the metal aesthetics, and marries it to the features everyone wants. Lightweight, removable battery, and expandable storage. Now let's talk accessories. LG released the G3 together with the flip cover and the WCD100 wireless charging stand. In the box, we find a stand with the user manual as well as a piece of paper which states that the charging stand must use only the 1.8 ampere output adapter included with the G3. This is a disadvantage as one look on eBay and you realize not many products use 1.8 amperes. Other accessories such as glass screen protectors, normal screen protectors, and protective casings can be found on eBay. The LG G3's initial pre-order pricing is available on screen for comparison. If you ignore the differences in the mobile plans, the cheapest way to get the G3 with a $40 plan is through M1 at $449, whereas with a $60 plan, the cheapest is through Starhub. However, prices and proportions constantly change, so do visit your nearby telco shop for the latest deals, especially during National Day. Now, who is this phone for? There's no doubt that this phone is targeting the high-end smartphone market and competes with the Samsung Galaxy S5, Sony Xperia Z2, HTC One M8 and the yet-to-be-announced iPhone 6. Judging from the strengths and weaknesses of the G3, I'd say it aims at a person who doesn't like the plastic feel of the S5 and wants the premium metal construction of the HTC One, but wants a camera with higher resolution. At the same time, the person is a power user who has to reply office emails on the go and needs the big screen of, say, the Samsung Note 3, but doesn't want a large phone that can't fit in his pocket. That's all we have for this review of the LG G3. Do subscribe to our channel Gadget Gaming Fix and like our video if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. It really helps us a lot. Once again, I'm Zen, thank you, and I'll see you again in the next one.